Hello, one and all, and welcome to The Weekend Booktopian, a podcast about the latest in the book world and the books that we're reading this weekend. I'm Nick Wasiliev, Booktopia's social media specialist, and joining me is Mark Harding, our content and brand manager. Hi, Mark. Hey, Nick. Zia Karu, assistant to the CEO. Hi, Zia. Hello. And Ashley Berry, our campaign coordinator. Hi, Ash. Hey. Hi. So as always, we'll dive into some book news, talk about the books that we're reading, and then be sure to stick around when my guests will go head to head in a violent battle for supremacy that we like to call book fight. Ba ba ba. All right, so straight into book news, and we'll begin with the Rochelle Prize. Um, so the Rochelle Prize was uh, announced, and the winner uh, is Ailing Smith, who won uh, the prize for emerging writers for her fiction manuscript Petricor. Ash, what is the significance of this prize? This must be this is some big news for this must be big news for Smith right here. Yeah, huge. Look, I've been doing a little looking into it because I'll be honest, I hadn't heard of this prize, but it looks like it's for emerging writers and it's a pretty big deal. It seems like she gets a ten thousand dollar grant and mentorship with Hachette. So that's that's pretty huge for an emerging writer. I mean, what they're saying about her announces an assured and evocative new Australian literary voice. Look, I'm very interested to see this winning manuscript. Um, the the work with Hachette looks to develop the work into publication. So I I this is an exciting thing. I I didn't realize yeah that they had this kind of prize for emerging writers. So it's, yeah, big deal. Yeah, it's. I know that the prize was was founded a couple of years ago uh, due to the passing of uh, one of the, the CEO. A, yeah, the I CEO was reading of that Hachette, too. Yeah, yeah oh. sorry, but yeah, the CEO of uh, of Hachette, Yeah, due to, due to due to his passing, and That's it's a really, really fan- beautiful yeah. prize, really. Yeah, and it's. I think it's. It's really. It's. It's good that it can that it can lead uh, to some aspiring authors. Or authors actually getting that that first break, and it's really and uh, it's awesome to see that that Ailing will be seeing that book, and hopefully we'll be able to see it in front of a larger audience now. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm definitely got my eye on it. Awesome. Um, the other big news as well is that the Walkley Book Award shortlist for 2020 uh, has been announced, and the shortlisted titles uh, are "We Can't Say We Didn't Know" by Sophie McNeil, "Fallen." And the Altar Boys uh, by Suzanne Smith. I, I know that you have uh, had a had a geezer at one. One do you think uh, is likely to, you know, grab your attention and take and be poten- the potential favourite? Morris, Morris, Lucy Morris, Mars. Lucy Morris, Lucy Morris, Mars. Stand correct. Yeah. So um, last year's winner was um, Lee Sales. Um, and so this year, uh, we've got, we can't say we didn't know, which is about, um, uh, dispatches from war-torn areas, looking at asylum seekers and refugees and issues around that, which is very, um, hard hitting stuff. There's Fallen by Lucy Morris Ma and Fallen is about, um, the, uh, downfall of, of Cardinal, uh, George Pell, um, and his, um, his trial, uh, which I don't know whether there's an updated version now because the facts have, have well, not the facts haven't changed, but um, you know, his, his, his conviction has been overturned since the publication of that book. Uh, and that is the one that I read and I thought it was, um, it was really, really great um, work of, of journalism. She sat uh, in the courtroom uh, every day um, throughout that entire uh, saga. Um, and she really, really brings to life um, kind of, you know, what's, what was at stake there and what happened. It's really, again, very, very kind of somber stuff. And then the last one is The Altar Boys by Suzanne Smith. And that is another one that deals with, um, you know, institutional child abuse uh, with the Catholic Church uh, at the center of it. Uh, so, you know, out of those three, I've only read Fallen. So that's probably the only one that I could that I could confidently say was was a worthy was a worthy winner. But uh, they're all very worthy books. And I'm sure that that when the uh, winner is announced in a couple of weeks, uh, whoever it is, uh, it, it's a very deserving book. And um, they're all important books that everyone should read. Yeah, absolutely. I've heard a lot of stuff about Fallen and also the Altar Boys uh, in terms of the the information and the stuff that it digs up um, in terms of 
uh, its subject matter. And it's really awesome that the these this long form of journalism um, is being recognised with this fantastic award. Thanks very much for that, Mark. Um, so now we'll dive into the books that we have been uh, reading and enjoying over the last couple of weeks. Um, and I'm going to throw to you first, Zia. Um, what books, what have you been enjoying and getting your hands on over the last couple of weeks? So uh, I have, um, look, it is November and uh, it's the tail end of the year. I think everyone's running on fumes and, you know, <laughs> um, I know I am. So um, you feel you feel a bit, you feel tired, not a bit. You feel totally tired, you're done. And, you know, your confidence starts to drop a little bit. You, you start going, oh, you know, all the, you start questioning yourself, questioning your motives and your job and your life and all that kind of thing. I know I'm making it dramatic, but that's just me. <laughs> But others might feel this, feel it be in similar boats as I am. So I picked up a book that's been sitting next to my bed uh, for a while and um, I'm a huge fan of Brene Brown. And um, so this one is, I, I've picked up, uh, so Dare to Lead is something that I always refer to, but this one is Daring Greatly, um, the one I'm reading now. It's how how the courage to be vulnerable transforms, transforms the way you uh, live, lead, parent, all that kind of stuff. And it really brings us back to the whole, and, and uh, this whole theme of this year, because it's been so hard for everyone about about self care, self love. You know, be be kind to yourself, and and also it's okay to say when you're not okay, and 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 it's it's basically as well not just accepting, but actually living that truth. And and she talks about vulnerability and 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 how that is, you know, um, should be the forefront. And it's not a weakness, number one, uh, being vulnerable, and should be a forefront in how you um, live your life, really. And um, and it opens up and it's courageous and it opens up so many things to you and perspectives and puts your um, default context and your, and your mindset into sort of it refocuses it back. And I, I personally totally need that right now. I am running on empty. Um, so it was it was really nice to sit in my bed instead of rocking in the corner with a bottle of vodka, um, sitting in my bed, <laughs> drinking chamomile tea and reading that. <laughs> Sounds like it's an incredibly timely book for uh... – for these for these times right now look i think it really is um there's so much change and, and and people like you sort of question your existence i don't know i know i am you know you go what is the world meaning now is this how it's going to be and because we've we've kind of with everything now has changed with no end in sight and one of the things that really i don't know guys tell me if you feel the same a lot of these you know memes on instagram and facebook and all every 2021 can't wait to kick 2020 out the door and i'm like nothing's nothing's effing changing i, don't, I haven't heard that you know we're not flipping the switch guys covid is gone you know we're all the, the world is back to normal we're heading to bali or whatever it's it's this mindset that you know this year is going to be over and it's going to be different where there's actually no different inside at the moment it, it's still continuing this the, the same so I feel like it's going to be a rude awakening and if you're not really prepared mentally for that it, it's going to hurt that's me personally and I don't want to hurt it sounds like to me that this book would be the perfect thing to cushion the fall when when 2021 <laughs> yeah. hits and we I all reckon. realize oh wait no we're gonna to have to deal with all of this stuff for a long long period of time how frustrating yes that's what about you guys does anybody else in this feeling the same as I am right now and, and and sort of holding on to to these to you know um to books or whatever that are like trying to get that get that back into shape if that makes sense I don't know yeah I'm doing it like through like escapism which mm -hmm. I'll talk about when I get to my when I get to my book recommendations but um yeah it's been a tough year and <laughs> right um, uh, Mental health wise, it hasn't been the easiest for a lot of people. Um, and I think that um, I think that's something that we really need to to appreciate. Just you know, I think I think a lot of us compared to a lot of other people in the world have probably done it quite have probably had a better year um, than than a lot of people are, are kind of coping with now. I was talking to Richard Glover the other day for um a live stream and he made the point in that that um, something he thinks about is um, you know the people who you know the stand-up comedy person who started the year like in the underground comedy clubs and this was going to be the year that they got their invitation to the Sydney Comedy Festival or something and that didn't happen and now their career is back to square one and like I think there's a lot of people who have had to deal with that this year 
and then you know we've we've had you know steady jobs throughout the year and you know roof over our head and everything so we've been lucky in in that sense and i think um yeah sorry i'm, I'm rambling a little bit here but um yeah i i think not but this is a safe space. I think all of us are thinking this day in, day yeah. out. And, you know, sometimes you go, oh, God, I don't want to talk about this anymore, but really should type thing. Yeah. Just let it out, you know. And it's true. We've been really lucky, it, you know, at Booktopia. We, we've been extremely fortunate and, and so lucky and, and thankful and grateful that sometimes you go, well, I shouldn't feel this way because I should be grateful. You know, I, sh I still have work, but we've we've had to shift the way we work. We have to shift um, everything we're doing. We have to deal with incredible changes and volume and 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 demands and and also still be thankful because you know if you say oh my god I, i'm really not feeling okay well you still have a job well, why are you complaining or you still you know what i mean well yeah i think where, where i come at it from is um i think what what this year has done for for people like us who have had kind of that security and stability is it's thrown things into stark relief um in the sense of you know if the bottom were to fall out of society tomorrow and like this was what I did with my time. Is is that actually like this is getting this is getting too heavy? <laughs> no, but you know what? Did you see my eyes? Just I know nobody can see it. But I'm like, oh yes, I'm 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 digging it. You're right. Oh, God. It sounds to me like this, it sounds to me like this book has like brought brought out some some proper moments of reflection for you. Here, I love it. It really has. It really has. <laughs> I'm, it sounds like an absolute must, and, I, and you're making me well, want to. They are. It. Brene Brown is is incredible in terms of self love and healing and 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 perspective and context. And you know, I ended up buying a whole bunch of stuff like um, radical compassion uh you know <laughs> you know dare to lead all those kind of th those really um i think they're great great titles i'll, I'll share them uh, at the end and we can allow them if people are interested in though that that's um those type of books mm -hmm. she's great yeah i'll attach them we'll attach them down uh, in the description box for all of our listeners um i'm gonna throw now to you ash uh have you been have you also been in a similar mindset when it comes to your reading or have you been diving head first into full-on escapism oh escapism nick i've got <laughs> a couple of reads for you today um I've moved slightly away from my fantasy leanings. Uh, the first book I have read today is called The Erasure Initiative. Uh, so I've got a bit there. Um, I know no one can see it. But what it is, it's a young adult uh, kind of science fiction, psychological thriller read. Uh, and I read it really quick. Uh, I read it in a night. It's one of those really digestible, really compelling reads that you just want to get stuck right into. So I have a hook for you for this book. A girl wakes up on a self-driving bus. She has no memory of how she got there or who she is. The six other people on the bus are just like her. Then a series of tests begin. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, this book was recommended to me and I was pretty glad I read it. So predominantly the focus of this it's quite a, a looking at human nature book you know these people are stuck on a bus um the series of tests that they undergo are kind of those ethical dilemma tests um it starts with that classic trolley situation you know do you divert the trolley and sacrifice one person while saving a group of people on the tracks in front of you so um it, it then escalates from there but similar kinds of um choosing questions that serves to kind of be a bit of a pressure cooker. You know, it, it looks at human actions and decisions when under that pressure. And it also raises quite, I don't know, thought provoking questions in terms of the bigger questions and issues of memory and identity. So all this under the veil of like a kind of science fiction thriller is uh, perfect. I, I really enjoyed this read. Is it one of those books that basically you you keep reading and reading because you do, you're trying to make sense yeah. of it? So they sort of like they put okay, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that classic kind of uh, you, you know psychological thrillers. I just mm. have to keep reading to understand. If I stop now, I'm just going to keep thinking about you know mm. what's going to happen next, what's currently happening. I just need to know what this world is because and why and how yeah, did they get because there they've and... all lost their memory so they're trying to work out who they are why they're here what's the connection amongst them all while answering these ethical dilemma questions yeah it's it's one of those ones where i i pretty much had no choice but to read it in the one night 
Love it. So, um, go on, Nick. Love it. I just love the sound of, of I, I, every single time I've kind of either been producing all, all these podcasts and stuff, every time I hear, for example, Mark's obsession with thrillers and horrors, I, I'm suddenly now increasingly deviating towards them and this sounds like amazing. This, uh, yeah, this is the way you pitched it. Well, thank you very much. Um, look, it was recommended to me and I will gladly recommend it on to everyone. I wasn't disappointed, so I guarantee you're not going to be disappointed. That's how it works, you know. So everyone pick it up and read. Um, this, but- is, this is what I love about this podcast. It really, because we're all so different, like mm. this this podcast is actually being on here has made me buy so many books I would never actually pick up and read because it's not my genre mm. and um I've especially yourself Ash and uh, uh and I was like oh I've bought so many of the recommendations they've just been great and get really gets you and I really recommend that to anybody listening like do it it's fun you know you might not think this isn't what you read but mm. you know pick it up something different and you know if you like what the chat was about it's just you know no, it's really sort of worked for me no i agree do you know how many horror books are in my wish list right now i'm like mark have you read this yet like <laughs> what are your thoughts but yeah oh i need to work that out um i do have a second book for you nick Ooh, and yes. it's by diversion <laughs> Um, so I then, after I finished uh, the Erasure Initiative in one night, I started Shuggy Bane. I think that's how you say it. But it's the um, Booker shortlist title mm. that I've had sitting around and I thought I should probably read it before they announce the winner just in case. So I finished this one last night and I really loved it. I'm not sure, Zia, I remember you saying Booker, is this one of those ones that you were interested in? Absolutely, and I right. on my. I've actually bought it today with Ooh. a Paragon and um, the Mournful Body. All of the ones we talked about on that episode, they were sitting in my. You finally list done it. I did it, right. it for my discount, so well, I don't <laughs> yeah. need to sell it to you then. <laughs> no, was it really good? Well, I really loved it. It's um, so it's contemporary fiction, which I do really like that genre, and I read a lot of contemporary fiction, but it's not the kind of contemporary fiction I normally read. You know, it's set in the um, set in Scotland in the 1980s. It's about the time where the it's rife with poverty. You know, yeah. um, mining towns are closing. It's it's set in that working class period, and it's actually it's it's a really harsh book to be honest. It doesn't really hide away from that time. Um, it centers on Shuggy, this Shuggy Bain, this young boy who spends his childhood pretty much. Um, taking care of his mother who struggles with alcoholism. Um, he himself bears the brunt of not being quite normal, you know. Yeah. Um, other kids are really, like, properly harsh, not just your classic schoolyard bullying, uh, bullying. This is really like kids across the street coming, adding with knives or something like that, you know. It's, yeah. it's just, it's it's riddled with, a really complicated relationship. So that key mother-son relationship, but there's a couple of other siblings, you know, it's every... A key every- theme of suffering. And that was one of the things that I was like, I need to be really ready for a book like this because it does break your heart because do- the, well, the theme of, you know... I, I said it was actually quite a hopeless story, you know, but like the characters I read, I kept reading because I wanted something more and something better for them. And for the story, you know, I kept reading, wanting just to see something to come to fruition, which is exactly what the characters are going through. You know, they keep pushing through this time of mm. poverty and living on, you know, little coupons and just suffering with alcohol to get them through their years. And it's it's really heartbreaking. sad. It is, yeah. But I've, like I said, it's not the kind of book I would normally read, but I'm really glad that I did. And I suppose at the end of the day, that's the joy of these Booker Prizes. You know, I, I'm reading the Booker shortlist. I've got the, I've got two more I want to really try and finish. And they're, again, not books I would normally read, but I've not been disappointed yet in any of these. And this, I'm adding this one to the list, you know. I'm just, I'm glad I read it. I'm so envious of all of these books you're reading and it makes you want to get, buy more. God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ash. Those are, some, those are some amazing, amazing recommendations. All right. I'll, and with that in mind, I'll now throw to our resident expert in horror, uh, Mr. Harding. Are you still on the horror kick or have you got yeah. something new? 
No, I'm so predictable. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one I'm reading is um, it's available as an ebook on our website. It's called uh, The Graveyard Apartment by Mariko Koiki. Um, it's a Japanese novel um, translated by Deborah Bolivar Boehm. Uh, and it is the story of a family who moves into an apartment block that uh, has been built next to a graveyard, hence the name, The Graveyard Apartment. Um, and uh, I've not finished it yet, but um, uh, about halfway through. And basically this family moves in and they notice that the area around them is very desolate and lots of families are moving out of this apartment block. And then as the story progresses, you find out why, because there's something happening in the basement and it's very, very creepy and nobody quite knows what's going on. And the protagonist, uh, who is the mother in the family, um, who is a freelance uh, advertising artist, uh, spends her days trying to work out exactly what the mystery behind um, the, the haunting is of this of this apartment block. So that's, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's creepy. Um, I'm I'm curious to see where it goes, and uh, I, I really like just the way that she describes the area as this kind of forgotten about um, area that uh, that is just surrounded by graves, and uh, <laughs> they get they get you know a cheap apartment because it's next to a graveyard. And nobody wants to live there, and then once they're financially committed, they can't move out, and all the other families are leaving, and it's just going to be them left by themselves next to the graveyard. How do you sleep when you read this stuff? Like a baby. <laughs> oh, my God. I could not. Oh, God, I get shivers when you describe all the books you read like a space. <laughs> <laughs> sounds creepy. It, it sounds almost like cliché, though, but, like, I'm assuming that it must be just the way that it does it is just so good. Any, any, any haunted, it's essentially a haunted house story. And, you know, it's been done a million times. Um, but, you know. Still creepy. Yeah. Still. I, I, always, I always love it. And that's, you know, I think what we were talking about before, Zia, it's always nice to kind of have that moment where you're like, at least I don't live in a haunted apartment in the graveyard. Perspective. I like it. Yeah. Funny um, story. My best friend growing up in Canada, literally her bedroom window was three metres from the gate of a cemetery in Canada, and I used to sleep over all the time. We used to sneak in and play Ouija board in the cemetery in Canada, like minus 20 degrees in the snow. You could not pay me today to do this, ever. <laughs> you could not. And that's how stupid I was. I, I, don't, I don't know. Not, not, I, I, don't. I read all these books, but I would never, like, play Ouija board in the cemetery. You know what happened. I know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why I don't uh, read that stuff, because too much creepiness in my in my youth, probably. God, no thanks. <laughs> it's been done a million times before, but it's been done a million times before because it works. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, my God, and, yes. And the second book I'm I'm reading at the moment isn't about a haunted house. Um, haunted doll. But ha haunted, haunted bus. <laughs> haunted car. <laughs> so I'm, I'm on a bit of a, of a Stephen King reread at the moment, and um, I'm rereading Christine, um, which is his <laughs> novel about, uh, well, it is. It's a haunted car, basically, a possessed car. Um, I can't stop laughing. And it <laughs> is, is great. It is widely kind of regarded as one of his worst books. Um, I read it as a teenager initially, and I remember enjoying it and not kind of think like wondering why everybody didn't like it. Now that I'm reading it as an adult and not a teenager who had no taste and nothing to compare it to, I'm like, oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> is it one of those movies that you watch, you know, is terrible, but you'll rewatch and you're like, it comes a cult classic or... Yeah, not not, not really, really, not even that good. I don't know whether this is ever going to get kind of the revisitation that some of his other works have gotten, where you know they were kind of regarded as trashy and pulpy back in the day, but are now kind of held up a little bit more. This book is kind of a weird, weird beast. Uh, it's like the the guy buys a car and he becomes really obsessed with it, and there's all this implication that like. He's obsessed with it because the car is possessing him or something, but you don't actually get confirmation that anything supernatural is happening until like page 300. Oh. Like it takes a long time to get That's to the point. And you start off the story 
from his best friend's perspective. And then his best friend gets injured in a football accident and goes to the hospital. And then the novel flips to like the guy who bought the car's perspective. And it's just like this sudden jolt. And then the guy that you got to know is in hospital through the next part of the book while this guy is kind of getting possessed by his supernatural car. And the car just is is a jerk. Like it's just, it's it's like, it's It's uh, a jerk uh, car. I don't know. I haven't had many experience with car jerk cars, but what, what would a jerk car do? Like not open the door, change your music. <laughs> get the seat belt out and yeah. seat belt stuck. Well, yeah. I mean, it does things like that. Like you know, it 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 gives people a bad a bad feeling when they're in there. It has a bad smell. Mm-hmm. It lock the door mm-hmm. sometimes, but then it'll also run over random people. Oh, um, oh, okay. You know, yeah, okay. It's like a self driving. Yeah, it's like it's like a self-driving car, but like was that written before Herbie came out? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm that. trying to see where his inspiration came from. I mean, Herbie was... was from like the '50s, wasn't it? Like, yeah, this, this was this. Was, I think this was one of the ones that he uh, wrote in the '80s when he was out of his mind on cocaine. Yeah, 1983. That was. I was about to say he's probably on a trip, but I didn't want to slander him because I don't know much about Stephen King. But now that you've said it, the guy's off his face. No, he's he's quite open about it. He he says in his book on writing, um, I'm pretty sure it's in that, uh, that uh, there are books that he can't remember writing because he was out of his mind on drugs at the time. I think Pet Cemetery is one of them. He doesn't remember writing it. But anyway, wow. but like it's 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 a weird book, and, and like it's you know he's written about because because the the main characters are in high school. He's written about um high school better in in Carrie. He's written about hauntings better in in The Shining. He's written about kind of from the teenage perspective and, and like the adolescent perspective better in it. So this is kind of uh, it, it's it, it, it's kind of a, an an odd. An odd book. You can see, like, the idea of a possessed car or a haunted car being, you know, an interesting thing to explore. But he just it, he just doesn't pull it off. And it's, like, it's about a haunted car, and it's almost 800 pages long. I was about to say, it looks I was like a I was going to say, not much depth. Not much depth. Like, how much depth can you get? from a haunted car and I see that book yeah. it is a brick and again look I'm I'm up to page 430 right now and so far it's only run over one person <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> like, I don't the body count when I read these books one <sighs> person has it choked anybody with this with the with the seatbelt uh it didn't choke somebody with a seatbelt but um the main character's girlfriend almost choked um in the car but it was on a bit of hamburger but then like <laughs> her boyfriend was like suddenly like couldn't help her like and she saw like as she was choking and about to die she saw like the the instrument panel look like a face to her and then like a passerby pulled her out and like did the Heimlich maneuver and she was fine wow but, like, that sounds like the worst book I've ever heard where we're at. <laughs> so Sorry. Uh, link same. below yeah link, link below I hope we've really <laughs> sold it to you <laughs> yeah uh... <laughs> sorry wow. sorry sorry Hachette <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think Stephen King's going okay. Yeah, I was I just going to say he's done. fine. He can have one dad and not, you know, a little bit of non-royalties paid to him. And, we all uh, have a misfire at some point. Yeah. They can't all be good. They can't all be good. And they're well, not. They're not. I'm a huge fan of people. They're not all good. <laughs> it's part of the charm. Awesome, Mark. <laughs> Thanks for that. I am kind of inspired to get that just to see what a Me too. walking <laughs> What a train wreck of a car or a car wreck of a of, of a book this might be, but yes, love it. Oh look, he's still it's it's still Stephen King. Like it's yeah. like it's like you know any pizza is like good pizza or whatever the saying is. It's like mm-hmm. any Stephen King book is is good. Is that mm-hmm. what the saying is? There's something about pizza. I have a really bad headache. <laughs> See where your mind's at right now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for your amazing, wonderful recommendations. And now it is time to move on to the most terrifying, daunting part of the podcast. It is time for Book Fight. All righty then. So I, before we begin, I will uh, politely ask what your buzzers shall be. And I will throw to you first, Ash, what will your buzzer be? Um, I'll use Shuggy today. Shuggy, I like it. Yeah. All righty. Um, what about you, Zia? I'm going to lose. I also have a headache. Um, <laughs> I'll just... Uh, do, do, do. Oi! <laughs> Oi! Love it. <laughs> I, 
I was so tempted to go with the yeah, you did, but you, that you did beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, Mark. Uh, ghost car. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> okay, we are good to go. All right, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's play book fight. Question one. Clanland's authors, Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish, are leading stars of which famous oh, show? Oh, oh, oi, oi. Uh, we'll go Oi first. Sorry, I heard Oi first. Outlander. Tell it is Sam Outlander. Yeah. Correct. I love him. I'm a big fan of Diane Gabaldon. I know it's like mummy porn, you? but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I love those books and I love Sam Hewen in, in it. Gorgeous. Yeah, what a man. Her son has <gasps> fantasy under um, uh, Sam Sykes. Really? Yeah, Sam Sykes, the fantasy author, is her son. I did not know that. There you go. She's very long-winded, but I I do like the books. <laughs> Amazing. Right, Love so it. Moving on. Yes, one point for me. <laughs> Question two. A wanted man, persuader, without fail, and gone tomorrow are titled in which famous series? Can you, can you run them by us again? A, a wanted man. Persuader, without fail, and gone oh, tomorrow. Oh, oi! Yep. Uh, Jack Reacher? Jack Reacher, correct. Wow. Well done. Zero's on a roll. Um, and I yes. was researching the other stuff before and I came across, Lito anyway, I, I always mistake Lee Child and Lee Sales. I know, don't make fun of me. And <laughs> anyway, I Googled the wrong one and it came up and that's where I saw it. Yeah, no, you are absolutely correct. Yes, Jack Reacher and by Lee Child and uh, the new book, by the way, The Sentinel actually came out last month. I don't know how it's like the 25th. There's a lot. Um, mm. Question three, who am I? And this is for three points, but I will give you an extra two points if you can name the author before I name the title of their first novel. Who am I? I was born in, in Ottawa in 1939. <gasps> That's where I'm from. Yep, I was born in Ottawa in 1939 and spent much of my childhood in the backwoods of northern Quebec due to my father's research in forest, in forest entology. I did not attend school full-time until I was 12, but began writing stories and poems at the age of six. I realised I wanted to write professionally at age 16 and published my first collection of poems, Double Purse Phone, released in 1961, and won the E.J. E. Pratt Medal. Following this, I published several collections of poetry until I finally debuted with my first novel, The Edible Woman, in 1969, which has since become a landmark in proto-feminist fiction. I then embarked on a string of incredibly critically and commercially successful novels, including Life Before Man, The Blind Oi. Assassin. Yep. Oi, Brad, Ben, Brad, Brad, it's a B name. Is it a B name? Am I right? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Sorry. I've embarked on a string of incredibly critical, critical and commercially successful novels, including Life Before Man, The Blind Assassin, and The Handmaid's Tale. Oh, Winner God. of the night. Ghost Car. Ghost oh. Car. I heard Ghost Car first. Margaret, Margaret Atwood is the correct answer. <laughs> I knew, I knew the that. second. <laughs> yes, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so the but answer. There you go. I grew up in Ottawa. That's cool. I didn't know that. Fancy that. You and your you and your ghost yes. in your Ouija boards in, in backwards in back Ottawa. Um, so that's it was actually off uh, Montreal Road. Oh, nice in that's Ottawa, <laughs> where that cemetery was. Um, so that's three points to you, Mark. Okay. Question four. Name this closing line to a book, and this is for two points. Whatever our struggles and triumphs. However we may suffer them, all too soon they bleed into a wash, just like watery ink on paper. No? No. No? Mm -mm. No one? Mm -hmm. Nothing? Mm. I, I hear nothing. We have no response. Not, it's I'm Memoirs of a Geisha. Geisha. Memoirs oh. of a Geisha by Arthur Golden was the answer. I've watched the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, it's actually not a bad movie. I don't mind it. No, it's not. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> I had it on video chess. Mm. I know. You guys are probably don't even know what that is. <laughs> um, question five. How many books did Philip K. Dick publish during his lifetime? Oi. 
Yep. 12. Not mm. Oh, 42. Oh, you are so close. <laughs> Half a point. <laughs> 43. No. Ash. 41. No. 40. No. <laughs> Oh, was that 49. That's not very close. 49? No. Mm. Well, you, get, you each get one go. You each get now get one guess. 47. No. Mm. 45. 45? No. Ash. 38. No, the answer was 44. No. <laughs> no I like, did say 44. No, you didn't. You said 49. <laughs> I said 49. Oh, well, yeah, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear a 44, so therefore it didn't happen. <laughs> Okay, we have we've got three questions left to go, and currently Ash is on zero, Zia is on two, and Mark is on three. I expect there to be a lot of loud noise for this next question, and I am terrified. Question six: For three points, name three books shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Shaggy. Uh, okay, we have Shaggy. Yep. Uh, uh, a Paragon. Uh, it's it's uh, it's Ash's go. Sorry, Shaggy. <laughs> we are always having a go. Shaggy, Shaggy, Shaggy yeah. Sorry, Ash. Um, so, Shaggy Bane. Yes, we have one. Uh, Real Life. Uh, yes. And The New Wilderness. Yes, correct. Three points to Ash. Nicely done. Okay. Yeah. Question seven. Which author recently won the 2020 Rischel Prize? Bonus points if you can name the novel. Uh, uh, Ghost Car. It was, Alien, it was Alien Smith, as yes. mentioned at the top of the at the top of the, the show, and yes. the book was called. Um, it was the, that word that they say in Doctor Who. Petrichor. Petrichor. That's the correct answer. Do you guys know what's embarrassing? I had it open on my screen and I just didn't look. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are now down to our last question and currently the scores are Zia on two points, Ash is on three, Mark is on five. So just for, just for fun, I'm going to make this last question two points to see potentially if uh, someone can equal with Mark. Last question. Which legendary filmmaker is set to release a visual companion book highlighting photography real life pieces inspired by his films? Oi. Yep. James Cameron. No. Nope. No George Lucas? No. Nope. Shaggy. Um, yep. uh, Spielberg? No. Nope. Oh, <laughs> you, you literally did a... You, you, okay. We've hit the main three. <laughs> All right. Um, John Waters? No. Nope. Is the American? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, 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 Scorsese? Nope. Okay. Uh, everyone gets. Uh, everyone gets one more guess. What's that guy with the hat? What's his name? <laughs> it's nice and specific. <laughs> All right. I'll guess Tarantino. Nope. Ash and Zia, you've got. I'm not. Uh, Mark and Zia, you've got one more guess each. Oh. Uh. Just write the, the question again. Yeah. Which up. legendary filmmaker is set to have a visual companion book highlighting real life photography places based in, inspired by his films? Oh, yes. really? It's not terrible. Oh, 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 uh, Wes Anderson. <laughs> yes, it's Wes Anderson, is the answer. <laughs> Accent, yes, there's a book coming out. Oh, we yeah. actually have a competition running at the moment. Um, mm. And you can you can potentially buy a copy or you win a copy of this book called Accidentally Wes Anderson, signed by the director himself. Okay, so that's the uh, that was the answer to that question there. Don't look, don't look like that, Ash. Don't be sad. Oh, that frustrates. I can't use yeah, up all my guesses. <laughs> just 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 for context, everyone, uh, Ash actually kind of helps coordinate those those competitions. I'm sorry, Ash. The question, I was like, of course. I thought it <laughs> <laughs> um, so that brings us to the end of book fight and look at the results and oh my goodness gracious me um, Ash you finished with three points Zia finished with two but Mark once again cl claims it with seven points great effort all around I, is it, is it, I do it every time <laughs> I was say is it still exciting Mark <laughs> <laughs> it's boring now 
<laughs> Thanks, then can you stop winning? Give us a chance. Only really? seven. <laughs> Oh, well, look, I must say, it is, it is getting closer and closer and closer every time you play. So eventually you will claim the victory over him and he will be so bitter. I still have the points record, though. Remember that time that I got, like, 19? Yeah, he won. No one remembers. Was, I didn't no one remembers. That, no one remembers. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> we, actually, we actually had him and Liv on, on a podcast recently and I actually thought the universe was going to implode because they Oh, were my God, Liv Rico? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me. You went against Liv. Yeah, but she won. Didn't yeah, she won. She I know win. she would have, but I would have gone against her. I, I, I let her win because I'm scared of her. <laughs> and so you should be. She's fierce. <laughs> oh, it's going to be fun for her listening back to this. Um, so that brings Love us... Love Liv. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that... You won under your own merits that time, Liv. <laughs> I'm anticipating there'll have to be a rematch at some point uh, in, the, in the near future. Um, so that will bring us to the end of this week's episode of The Weekend Booktopia. And thank you so much to all of you guys for tuning in and for giving me your amazing book recommendations. You're all amazing. You guys are so awesome. You guys make up. This is, this is, this is my highlight. Of, oh. my, of my weeks i promise you not i like i kid you not this is awesome <laughs> oh you're a sweetie pie thank you um uh, the weekend booktopian was produced by myself nick Wasiliev, and you can find all of these books that we've mentioned down in the description box um you can also head over to our soundcloud and you can listen to a hundred a whole bunch of other author discussions book analysis pieces and more including our most recent interview with malcolm knox on his book truth is trouble alternatively if you're watching this on youtube you can also go and check out a whole bunch of our booktopia live events including our recent one with samuel johnson and hilda hinton as well as our other one with andrew cotter on his book olive mabel and me uh, that will bring us to the end of this week's episode of the weekend booktopian we hope you have a lovely weekend and never stop reading Thank you for listening to the Booktopia podcast channel. Don't forget, you can subscribe to us on SoundCloud and iTunes for free and get access to hundreds of author discussions, book analysis pieces and more. Or, if your eyes need a workout, head to Booktopia TV on YouTube. Don't forget, for all books featured in this podcast and for access to a whole bunch of other fun content on our blog, head to Booktopia. Australia's local bookstore at booktopia.com.au